Hey everyone, how's it going? God Gamer here. Today I wanted to talk about the new Any% NMG Moss Knight Geo Route. It's not a complete reroute of the category, it's just getting Geo from some different enemies. So you go through the exact same rooms in the run, you just go through different parts of the rooms or go through the rooms a little bit differently. But it's still super exciting for me because it's just something new in a category that's so well established and optimized and hasn't seen major changes for years. So the main thing with the Moss Knight Geo route is that you get Geo from the Moss Knights right before Hornet instead of getting Geo from City of Tears enemies and the first Devout in Beast Den. So far, it seems like the route might save a bit of time, but it's not so much about the time save, interestingly enough. It's more about how being able to skip the Devout in Beast Den actually makes the run a lot safer potentially, particularly if you use a specific trick, which I'm going to talk about a bit later. So just looking at the leaderboards real quick, I want to give a bit of history just based off what I know, which is a little bit patchy, but hopefully I'm right. New world record, by the way, in case you didn't know, new world record after quite a while. Uh, but I think Jagot was the first person to start using this in runs, and and no one else picked up on it right away, but then recently Skate King has been using it and you can see that's a pretty excellent PB and also Lep started using it and I think Guanqi has also been practicing it. So presumably Guanqi is also going to be using it. I think it's objectively just a little bit of a better route, even though it doesn't save a ton of time. It's mostly about how it affects how the run kind of plays out overall. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to be going over the strats that we have to use in order to make this route as effective as it is, because much like the Vengefly King quick kill strat, you have to do the strats in a very specific way in order for them to actually be competitive. Just think of it, if you fought Vengefly King normally without the quick kill, it would take so much time. It's the exact same thing with the Moss Knight route. If you don't do the strat exactly the way you're supposed to, you'll probably end up losing time. So don't feel obligated to switch to this strat if you're already using the Vengefly King quick kill, because it is one or the other. If you're doing the Vengefly King quick kill, you're not going to have enough soul to kill the Moss Knights. So you do have to make a choice between like which enemies you kill. So I'm going to be watching through this in slow motion just to kind of show you this. I will give a warning that, you know, I'm not a world record runner anymore, so this might not be perfect, but I think this is basically showing off the strap pretty well. So uh, I think it's Marcus who found kind of some of these little optimizations. As you're falling, you want to side slash both these geo rocks, up slash both the geo rocks again, then you jump and you side slash this Moss Knight as it spawns because its shield hitbox hasn't appeared yet as it's spawning. So you can actually get the hit on it right away and you can hit both the Geo Rocks with your side slash if you jump to this spot. And then after that, you do a fireball and you hit the Geo Rocks at the same time. You have to make sure your fireball hits this Geo Rock down here Otherwise, you're going to be hitting it with like five nail slashes to kill it. And then in between each fireball, you just do up slashes just like this. And you should kill both these Geo Rocks right away. And the Moss Knight on the left should die. Okay. Now this rock isn't going to be killed yet. So you're going to want to slash it once or twice. Uh, twice, actually. <laughs> because you should have hit it with three fireballs, I believe. And then as you walk to the right, you just pogo the Moss Knight because that gets past its shield and that should kill it if you hit it with all three fireballs. And you just want to make sure to move to the left as you're collecting the uh, Geo from the rocks and from the Moss Knight just to make sure you get all of it. Otherwise, some of it's going to be left behind you. Now let's watch through this in full speed. It looks super tricky, but once you practice it a little bit with save states, it's not too, too bad to pull off. And you know, if you do miss some of the rocks with your nail slashes or fireballs, it's not the end of the world or anything. It's not like with the Vengefly King quick kill, where if you mess up, you know, the Vengefly King is gonna scream or whatever. You really just wanna make sure the fireballs actually hit the Moss Knights. Otherwise, then you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Okay, so this is what you do if the Moss Knight is too far on the right. 
So the Moss Knight, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's super far on the right. You can't see it when you jump down. And if that happens, what you do is you do the same slide slash into up slash. And then as the Moss Knight spawns, you hit it with a right slash just as normal. But then you walk back and forth in and out of the Moss Knight's range so that it doesn't attack. Because the Moss Knight will only attack if you stay in its range. So if you rapidly walk in and out, the Moss Knight just doesn't know what to do and just sits there. So you can see just like that. And after you kill the rocks, I usually do one extra slash and kind of walk to the right a little bit. And the Moss Knight on the right should just barely be within range of your fireballs. So as usual, you finish that rock off. Then you can just pogo that Moss Knight and continue on. Now, one of the big benefits of this route as well is that you don't have to collect Geo in the City of Tears. Geo collection in the City of Tears can be a big pain in the ass because there are enemies that you really want to get double hits on, but they often don't get double hit and then you have to walk up to them and do extra hits on them. So City of Tears is a bit smoother if you don't have to worry about Geo collection. You might even be able to pull off a sneaky heal on an elevator, but really it's just about pulling off the Devout Skip. Now in the past, Devout Skip has been something that we've only done if we randomly have an extra 40 Geo somehow in the run and the Devout moves backwards, which opens up enough space for you to just jump over its head. But there are actually consistent ways now to pull off the Devout Skip, which is super cool because then we can collect the extra Geo early and we can count on being able to skip the Devout. The other thing about skipping the Devout is that if we are going to skip the Devout, then we don't need the soul in order to cast fireballs on the Devout. And that allows us to save and quit as soon as we land from breaking the webs upon entering Beast Den. After that save and quit, you just reload the save file and you have full health. So if you enter Beast Den with one HP, you can just save and quit out, reload the save file, and you have five HP. It loses I haven't timed it, but it seems to lose about a second or so to quit out. And speedrunners are also kind of labbing ways that they can use the soul to kill the spiders up above this part and crystal dash across, but it doesn't seem to gain a significant amount of time, or rather save a significant amount of time. I've seen people throw around numbers like 0.3 seconds if you pull it off correctly. So really, unless you're like a world record caliber speedrunner, you probably won't care too much about that. And you can take advantage of this to get a free heal at the start of Beast Den, which I think for beginner to advanced runners, that's like a huge benefit. So this is the fast version of the Devout Skip by Axel. I don't know if I'd recommend this one because it's pretty hard to pull off. But basically all you do is you just jump, pogo, and you want to dash across the Devout as it starts its attack because the attack moves the Devout to the right and its hitbox just gets so janky at the beginning of that animation that you can just dash over top of it. And for some reason, there's no hitbox there anymore. But yeah, the fast way to pull it off is jumping up here, pogoing, and then dashing immediately after. It just, it didn't seem super consistent for me. So I'm not sure if I would recommend this strat, but it's definitely something you can try out. It saves approximately 0.8 supposedly, compared to the other strats. This is an easier version of the strat found by Magma, which was posted by Lep in the speedrunning Discord, so shoutouts to them. Let me show you this from the start. So, so as you do this dash onto here, you actually walk a little bit before doing another dash. And you can actually even walk a little bit more if you wanted to, so you dash directly into the Devout. But the idea is you want to activate the Devout's AI as late as possible, so there's less chance of the Devout doing an instant attack because they're kind of annoying to deal with, which I'll get into later. So once you've got to this point where you've taken damage from the Devout, what you do is you up slash and then immediately jump, and you just hold left and dash once you get to the ceiling. And if you do it with the right timing, you'll get through the Devout every time. Let me just play this once more at full speed. And again, remember to delay that dash slightly. Otherwise, there's a pretty high chance the Devout will just attack you. When the Devout retaliates, when you hit its mask, it just 
instantly attacks you with no delay. When the Devout chooses to attack you on its own, there's going to be like a half second delay before it actually does the attack, which means the dash timing on your end is going to be a bit different. So it's really important to recognize when it does a regular attack and when it does an attack because you hit it. Okay, so if the Devout does the instant attack, which is basically attacking as soon as its AI activates, what you do is you just do the strat as normal. So you can see I'm like, I up slash here, but the Devout's already about to attack. So I know that the attack isn't because I attacked it. It's just a regular attack. So there's going to be a bit of a delay before the attack actually goes off. So I react by doing a pogo, and this was something I believe it was found by Lep, and that just kind of stalls you in the air for a second so that you can do the dash as the, as the attack starts. Now the other thing you can run into with the Devout is what happens if the Devout backs up. So this used to be the only way to pull off the Devout skip. And it's a little bit annoying because normally you'd expect to take one damage if you're doing the normal Devout Skip where you just jump over its head. But because of the fact that we've already damage tanked at this point, it means we're gonna take another damage as we jump over its head most of the time. So you can see I try to do the up slash, but the Devout's already back here. So all you do is just jump on top. You can try to pogo it so that the Devout moves forward and you fall down after. Doesn't always work, so I just do a dash overhead, take another damage, and continue on as normal. But yeah, that's the new Moss Knight Geo Route. Now, if people are talking about it, you actually know what it means. I had to do some research into it myself, but some people on the Discord were kind enough to post instructions. So huge shout outs to Lep, Magma, Axel, and Marcus. Sorry if I missed anyone, but those are the people whose strats I actually looked at. And yeah, now is a super exciting time to get into the run. There's new discoveries. There's so many new PBs. I'm gonna make another video talking about that pretty soon. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching and hope you have a wonderful day. Peace. Oh. Oh.